dobar jutro, ali dobar dan, ali dobar večer, ali lako noć. Ah, zdravo. Hello. Um, hello friends. Hello acquaintances. Hello. That's a fork. Hello to the child who clicked on this video. Hello, those of you that left YouTube on autoplay. Hello, mother. Point being, that's some good tea. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another video that has mysteriously appeared on the internet despite my absence from my home. For those of you who don't know, I am on a mission in Slovenia currently, which means all the videos that come out for the next 18 months for my channel would have been filmed between the months of December and March. Now you know why for the next 18 months it will always be winter and never Christmas on my channel. If you happen to be new here and you feel like subscribing, then help a girl out and you can do so down below. Just click that red button. Today, what are we making? We are making the teddy bear dress, or what I like to call the teddy bear dress. I've always been fond of really cute clothing, and amongst the cute clothing, I love overalls, and I've seen a couple overall dresses on Pinterest. I've always kind of wanted to make one for myself, and um, maybe it's because it still ties back to my love of European clothing, because as soon as I finished this dress, my coworker said it looked like a German milkmaid dress, so I think that's a win here. Most of the videos that you're going to see come out are videos about the clothing I have made for myself as I serve my mission. So this is the first of many, so I'm gonna turn the time over to um, Mary from a, a few months ago to, to kind of show you what happened when all this inspiration first struck. Hello friends, so today I woke up and then this very extremely fortunate, but rare occurrence occurred to me. You see, I woke up, I look fine, I look fine, and I have money in my bank account, and I have time on my hands, and I've got gas in the car, and I have the whole house to myself, and I thought, what am I going to do with this fortunate occurrence? And so I thought to myself, and I thought, you know, I need to do some sewing, I need to get some things done, but it just seemed like such a good day to have a marvelous adventure. Let's go. Alright, let me show you what I got. So basically what I was looking for, I mean I wasn't looking for anything too specific, although there were a few fabrics that I did want to get. I wanted to get one of those fabrics that looks like the maps that sailors use. I know they have a lot of cotton prints of that, so I've always wanted to make something from that. And I was also looking for mushroom fabric. Uh, disappointingly, I didn't find any that I liked. I found some silky ones and I found some stretch ones, but there wasn't really any cute mushroom cotton prints. I was mainly looking for things made of cotton or linen or wool that that kind of struck my fancy. My goal here was to make some more practical clothing, so I wasn't really looking for anything too fancy like satins or laces, or not laces, but like satins, taffetas, silks, those I wasn't really looking for. And first of all, these two fabrics I actually didn't buy today, I bought these from the Walmart fabric clearance section just a few times when I've gone there to get a few sewing supplies, but I really liked them. This one kind of, this one I think just needs to be made into a Regency gown of some sort. I feel like it's just super Jane Austen. It's this really pretty floral print and then it's got some weaving in it, so I find that really it's really pretty. So I've got about I've got about three yards of that. And then this one is a a green floral print. And it's like that nice sage moss green that I love. There's two yards of this, and I believe it's it's got like a cotton feel to it. And now let me show you what I got from the store. 
So I went to three places. I went to Walmart and Joann's and Hobby Lobby. And surprisingly enough, Joann's had nothing that I wanted because they have, believe me, they have many, many options to choose from, but really nothing struck my fancy and certainly nothing that would make me want to pay the amount that they charge there because um, everything as we know at Joann's is a fortune a yard unless it's on sale. But my first stop was Hobby Lobby and I got some really really pretty lace. I got two yards of this. It's This one is 100% cotton uh, which it was one reason I was really sold on it. And then we have this one which is a similar beige color and this one is a poly cotton blend so it's got like a bit of a stretch to it because it's got this mesh but it got this really nice floral embroidery and I think I have like two yards of that and then I picked up some trim so this is just spool trim I'm pretty sure it's 100% polyester but it's really gorgeous it's like this cute little it's got this cute little heart pattern on it and um, so I'm hoping that with that trim, I can make some sort of apron. And for the base of the apron, I have this, I have three yards of just regular cotton muslin. And this one's actually more of like a, a thicker weave. And it's got a little bit more body to it, but it's really soft, really nice. And it's got a nice beige color to it as well. And then the last thing I got from Hobby Lobby was this really adorable, not really a flannel, but it's like a, it's more of like a linen, it's like a linen fabric and it's in this really pretty chocolatey brown color. So that, that would make a really cute dress. I got some hecking cute stuff. Let's just begin with the, one of the, this is the more, one of the more exciting fabrics. This is like a book uh, it's a cotton print and it's like book pages so it's just got some rando text on there warm ipsum or something and I think I have four yards of that so I can make a freaking cool library whoops like a library book dress or something and then we have this really pretty um, rose print cotton there's two yards of this and so it's just got some really cute red roses and I and I have some other fabrics that will complement that nicely and then we have another gingham checkered picnic blanket type fabric this one is in like a navy blue uh, also have four yards of it and then they had these um, let me just open them these um, single yard cuts of pattern fabric in like their pattern quilting section. I believe they, they like always have these at like every single Walmart that I go to so it shouldn't be that hard to find. So this one is like a navy blue um, ocean map and then this one like a uh, off-white gray um, sailor's map print as well and basically my plan for this is I wanted to make like a vest or a jacket of some sort incorporating both of these fabrics. And then I have a few notions from Walmart as well. Uh, buttons for the vest or for something else. So I've got some like metal ones. I try to steer clear from plastic buttons because I'm just a quality kind of person. So I usually go for like wooden buttons or metal buttons. And then I also bought this clasp which gives like Anna from Arendelle vibes. So yep, that's my little haul. <laughs> to make my teddy bear dress, did I even say why, why I called it the teddy bear dress? It's called the teddy bear dress because it just reminds me of corduroy or it looks like something a child would wear or like it just looks sweet and innocent like a teddy bear so that's why I've decided to call it that. It's also brown so that's another thing. Um, anyway, to make the teddy bear dress I took my pattern from the top of a jumper that I had in my wardrobe. Alright guys, so I'm just gonna show you how I work out my patterns. So I'm about to cut out my fabric and the only pattern I have is for the top of this bodice here. So 
I'm gonna kind of like show you how I decide which pattern pieces I need. So obviously you need to know which ones I need to cut out before um, I make the dress. And the one I always forget is the pocket, so I'm just gonna write that down first so that we remember that we need to cut out the pocket. And so here I'm just making a list of all the pattern pieces that I need. And then I have patterned the bodice, so I'm just gonna write bodice. And next we're gonna need, so looks like we need some straps. And they connect here with a button, so I think we'll have separate front straps. And then back straps. And these back straps will come from back here, up and over, and then connect here with the button. And then it looks like we also have a tie or a bow, so I'm just gonna write bow. And then, and then usually the skirts are pretty simple. So that is, that's basically how I decide what I need for my pattern. I pretty much just wing everything. Um, so, but yeah, I like make sure I draw up, at, at least I have a front and back drawing of what I'm making. If this was a bigger project, I'd probably make a pattern flat, which is more of a professional, um, fully laid out to scale version of what the dress is going to be like. But since I'm going just based off of this inspirational drawing, I can take as many creative, creative liberties as I want. So, yeah. So I cut out my pattern and when I cut out my skirt, I cut a muslin lining for it as well, but I kept it about five inches shorter. I also cut some gussets from my extra material to give the skirt a little bit more flair. First, I surged together my bodice panels and I did the same with the bodice lining. Alright, someone explained to me what I did wrong because um, somehow this ended up being so much bigger than it was supposed to be and all I did was add a quarter inch seam allowance and I sewed it with quarter inch seams. So like. The math should check out, but like, the, okay, so like this, see this is the seam allowance that I added, right? That's, n that's not that much, but like, I've already taken this in like, at least two or three inches, and like, it's still so baggy on me for some reason. Um, like it looks alright, uh, but like, there's all this space and I can take it in like probably two more inches so I don't know what happened but um I'm gonna have to make some changes to my pattern after that was settled and I ended up taking in about four inches I cut some boning to stiffen the bodice I sealed the boning in a twill tape casing which I actually use gross grain ribbon but twill tape would be ideal and then I top stitched them to my lining I always place the bones mostly by the closures to prevent puckering and around the center back to prevent wrinkles. If this was a ball gown bodice, I would have boned every seam and some in between, but since this is a more casual dress, I don't need that many. And then I sewed the lining to the bodice, good sides facing, and then understitched that seam. For my overall straps and waistband, I surged some tubes and pressed them flat. And before I sewed the straps on, I decided to add some lovely cotton lace to the front and back of the bodice. Then you may add the straps, and I use them to cover the raw edges of the lace. For the skirt, I surged together the skirt panels, except for the side seams, repeating for the lining, and I did not forget to add those pockets about six inches from the waist. And then I can stitch up the side seams along with joining the pockets together. And because I am surging the skirt and pockets at the same time, the serger can't, um, the, the serger tends to cut corners, which means the, the part where the skirt and the pockets join often gets skipped. So I like to just go over that with my Bernina sewing machine afterwards and just reinforce those little corners there. So because this dress is a dress with front closures, that means there also needs to be a opening down the front of the skirt. So what I did is I just folded the front panel in half and then I cut it 
all the way down and I did the same with my lining and this is just later re-sewn in place um, up up until about eight inches away from the waistline so that I have a nice big opening to get in and out of my dress and so usually the I just overlap the seams about an inch um, the stuff I just cut I overlap it about an inch and then just top stitch it up to the point that needs to open and then I rolled hem the bottom and to my center front panel I attached more lace I stay stitched the waist and then I joined it to my bodice and I think I had to re-sew the waist and uh, the waist of the skirt to the bodice like three different times because the bodice ended up being too long and it w like when I tried it on it would have this like really awkward like fold at the waist so I had to cut that down a few times and then I unpicked the back strap a little and, the and then I sewed in ties for a bow I hand stitched the ends of my ties and straps closed and then I attached buttons to the front straps. I also sewed on buttons and buttonholes down the front for my closures. And then I hand sewed the bodice lining down over the waist seam. And then I attached some hook and eyes at the skirt and I also attached two more at the top where the lace was because I didn't really want buttons to go through my lace so I just added hook and eyes there and that concludes the project Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun making this dress and I think it turned out super cute. And I hope you guys are excited to see more of my wardrobe. My videos will be coming out about every other month, which isn't quite often, but at least it's frequent. And I will have plenty of really fun content. Most of the clothing is casual clothing, but they're all very unique and cute designs, so. I love them. Anyway, I hope you have a dobrodan, or I hope you have a good day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, Nesvirinje. Adio. Bye. <laughs> love you. Bye. So my camera does this thing where every 10 minutes it stops recording video so that I don't end up recording too much footage, and like, I checked just as soon as it, like, clicked me out because sometimes like I'll go over 10 minutes and then I'll just keep rambling and then realize that it caught none of my dialogue anyway got some lip gloss on my fingers wow what a great shot stop it what is wrong with you So did I. 
It's Amazon. You okay? Yeah. Do you just hate it when your friends leave? Yeah. I miss my friends too. You hear that, Sarah? You better come back to my house soon. <laughs> Got stuck in my hair. Oh yeah. December in Yanuar, or December, oh no, which I can't reach the pedal because my tripod is in the way. I'm short so I gotta move the seat up all the way. I have the hiccups. Hang on guys, I'm being, someone's texting me. Okay. Look at these tracks. It's clearly a dinosaur. No. It's a bunch of arrows telling me to go this way because there's some treasure. Ascending to heaven? Wow. Or is the brightness just way up? Yeah.